So uh, for today's event, I'm excited to have one of her own speakers for the AME Journal Club, uh, and I'm excited to be joined by Dr. Rikia uh, Yamashita. Um, Rikia is a postdoctoral fellow in the Quantitative Imaging and AI Lab uh, here at the Biomedical Data Science Department at Stanford, whose interests include novel applications of machine learning algorithms to biomedical data uh, analysis to improve diagnostic accuracy and to enable tailored patient care. Um, Rikia has a background as a board-certified board radiologist with over 10 years of clinical experience. And today, uh, Rikia will be presenting one of um, their latest articles in the Lancet Oncology, which talked about a deep learning model for the prediction of microsatellite instability in colorectal cancer. So we're excited to hear a little bit more about this. So please take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Akshay, for the introduction. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, do you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, thank so great. You. So thanks for having me at uh, Amy Journal Club today. Um, just to introduce myself. Um, well, there was already a great introduction, but I'm Ricky, a uh, postdoc in Rubin Lab at Stanford. I'm interested in applying machine learning to um, extract knowledge from unstructured data like images and texts, and that helps disease prognosis and patient risk stratification and outcome prediction. I'm yeah. yeah. um, so recent paper on deep learning model for the prediction of microsatellite instability in colorectal cancer uh, diagnostic study. Uh, this paper is about developing a deep learning based system that classify colorectal cancer into two distinct subtypes based on uh, microsatellite status using a uh, whole study images. So, well, today I will uh, first touch on the background and motivation of this study, such as what is microsatellite instability, why it's important, and evidence before the study and what were the unanswered questions that we tackled in the study. And then I'm gonna jump into our analysis method and results, and finally conclude with the ideas for future work. All right, so um, the colorectal cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed malignancy and the second leading cause of cancer deaths in, worldwide. Uh, this cancer can be categorized into two distinct subtypes um, called MSI high and MSS. So MSI high is a hypermutable phenotype that is caused by um, impairment of uh, DNA mismatch repair that affects um, 12 to 15 percent of the patients. And patients with MSI high cancers have a better stage adjusted prognosis. And the treatment strategy is quite different from those with the MSS cancers. So differentiating the MSA, MSI high tumors from MSS tumors is crucial for the tailored cancer management. And now guidelines recommend all patients of, with the colorectal cancer be tested for MSI status. However, um, Despite guidelines recommending universal MSI testing, outside of the, the tertiary care centers in high income countries, uh, many patients remain untested um, for the MSI status, as the, the MSI testing is labor intensive and expensive. Um, in fact, even in the era of the universal MSI testing, there uh, remains there remains like interest in having pathologists evaluate H and E stain slides to triage patients for MSI testing. Um, so there is a, a crucial need for more broadly accessible and cost efficient tool to aid patient selection for MSI testing so that those likely to have MSI high tumors um, can be identified for confirmatory um, testing while uh, reducing the la labor and expense associated with testing patients with MSS. So in 2019, a paper published in Nature Medicine showed up, uh, showed that uh, deep learning 
can actually classify routine whole cell images of colorectal cancers into MSS and MSI high with an AURC of up to 0.84. And now this seminal study raised a few um, questions such as whether um, automated deep learning based system could provide added value to current clinical MSI testing paradigms and how such a system output should optimally be um, integrated in these paradigms. Um, so the primary aim of this study was to develop and validate a deep learning based um, system for classifying MSI status and to report key um, clinical metrics, uh, such as sensitivity, specificity, and negative predictive values uh, with, uh, based on various operating points to explore whether an automated system could provide added value to the current clinical MSI testing paradigms. And then um, to uh, conduct a reader study uh, that directly compares a deep learning uh, based system with expert pathologist to on the same data set. So in this study, we mainly used um, two data sets. Uh, one is Stanford CRC, that is a single institution data set used for model development and it has 100 whole slide images and in total, where 50 were MSS and 50 were MSI. And all whole slide images were originally scanned at 40x magnification level after pre-processing and tissue selection. Um, we'll talk about this in, in the next slide, but um, it ended up with 66,000 tiles. Um, the ground truth MSI status was determined using a PCR or immunohistochemistry testing. On the other hand, the, the this TCG CRC is a, a multi-institution multi data set and used for the model validation. Um, it has 484 whole study images from 479 patients. The slides were scanned at either 20x or 40x uh, magnification levels. And the total number of the tiles were after pre-processing and tissue selection were uh, 287,000 tiles. Uh, well, all slides were generated, all, I'm sorry, all tiles were generated at 20x magnification level, uh, meaning all 40x uh, magnification uh, slides were down sampled to 20x magnification while tiling. The sample CRC has an equal class distribution, whereas the TCG CRC has skewed class distribution. Only 16% uh, were MSI high, and that is consistent with the reported prevalence of the MSI high in the general colorectal cancer population. Um, here's an overview of our pipeline. Um, each um, whole image was pre-processed by discarding the white background first and then partitioned into um, non-overlapping image tiles that were then color normalized. And all tissue containing tiles were input into a tissue type classifier, classifier to draw a tissue map uh, like this. And this tissue type classifier was trained separately and the details can be found in the appendix of the paper, but um, I, I won't go into depth about this today. Um, then with this tissue map, the regions classified as tumor epithelium or mucin were extracted. And we decided to keep mucinous regions, uh, region along with the cancer epithelium since, um, since it's known to correlate with MSI high um, cancers. So here we tried to infuse um, domain knowledge into the tissue selection process. Then it's mapped back to the, the whole set image. And we generated a um, separate set of larger size of tiles, which, <coughs> are, which was then input into the MSI prediction model um, to yield the um, tile level output for the MSI status. 
Um, these, tile, these tile level outputs were um, aggregated by taking the average to obtain a, a patient level score for MSI status. Uh, the MSI prediction model was based on the mobile net V2 pre-trained on ImageNet and, and trained by transfer learning using the Stanford CRC dataset. We validated the model, model performance using the TCGA CRC dataset. Um, in addition to the standard um, AUROC, we reported um, sensitivity, specificity, and NPV. To calculate these metrics, um, model outputs were binarized uh, based on two operating points that, that were predefined. Uh, the operating point one was chosen by uh, maximizing the sum of the sensitivity and specificity, and, and whereas the operating point two was uh, sensitivity weighted, uh, meaning it, it was selected so that the sensitivity is weighted twice as heavily as the uh, specificity uh, to increase the NPV uh, as we were originally interested in exploring the, the potential of this deep learning based system as a screening tool. And we then performed a reader study uh, using a class balanced 40 uh, whole study images that were randomly selected from the, uh, the uh, all 40 X Hosted images in the TCGA CLC dataset. Uh, we had five expert pathologists uh, um, to record whether they thought the cancer is MSI high or MSS, and also whether they would change their initial assessment after seeing the model's prediction. Uh, they further um, uh, evaluated the presence of the 10 histomorphological features listed in the box here uh, that were all known to be associated with the MSI high tumors. And at the conclusion of the study, they were also asked whether they would uh, be willing to use a machine learning uh, based model um, to triage cases for uh, further testing. So the, the model achieved an AURC of uh, 0.779 on the whole TCGA CRC dataset. And its performance was even higher when tested on the 40X subset uh, with an AURC of 0.826. We ob observed a, a significant performance drop on 20X slides. Um, since all tiles were uh, generated at 20X resolution, regardless of their base magnification level, um, this performance drop cannot be explained by the difference in the base magnification level alone. And I'll touch on this point later. Uh, on both holes DCGA CRC and its 40X subset, um, operating point two um, achieved a significantly higher sensitivity and uh, NPV compared to the OP1, whereas OP1 demonstrated superior uh, specificity. Um, considering the use case of, uh, as a screening tool, um, OP2 will work better uh, as it achieved about 94% uh, NPV uh, while preserving the specificity ranging between 66 and 70%. Uh, with this NPV of 94%, if all patients predicted to have MSS were excluded from the downstream confirmatory testing, this would reduce the number of the patients tested by um, 62%, yielding um, substantial test related labor and cost saving. We compared the performance of our model with the, the model proposed in the 2019 Nature Medicine paper. Uh, our model significantly outperformed the state-of-the-art model on the whole TCGA CRC dataset, uh, where, whereas there was no significant differences on the, the 40X and 20X subsets. So, um, so coming back to the, the question why our model performed poorly on the 20X subset, um, to examine the presence of uh, data heterogeneity or a batch effect, 
uh, related to the slide preparation and the scanning in the TCG CRC dataset. And to explore its impact on the model's generalizability, we, we extracted um, 20 image color metrics uh, from each whole set image, like color, histo histogram, brightness, and contrast, and applied dimensionality reduction using T-SNE and followed by um, unsupervised clustering. Uh, the, the result is shown in the, the, the upper left um, here, and there are clearly separated two uh, clusters uh, identified. And in addition, these clusters almost perfectly matched with the, the difference in the base magnification, like these yellow points are corresponding to 20x slides and purple points are, are, are corresponding to the 40x slides. And more, more interestingly, um, the, it turned out that most of the yellow points originate from a single institution out of all the, the 18 institutions in, the, in total. Um, so the ground truth MSI status um, showed no association with these two clusters. Um, these results suggest that the poor performance on the 20X slides possibly um, stemmed from uh, differences in the image color metrics for those slides, um, which all originated from a single institution. Um, here's some examples of the slides. Um, slides on the left um, originated originate from the, the single institution A, and the, the slides on the right came from other institutions and scanned at 40x. So uh, we can see the difference clearly. Um, on the TCGA um, CRC dataset used for the reader study, um, our model achieved an AURC of 0.865 and the AUPRC of uh, 0.914. And the performance of all five pathologists was below the model's um, AROC and precision recall curves. Um, each arrow for the, the pathologist performance shows change in performance after viewing the model's output and the interreader agreement among the pathologists without model assistance was um, only 0.299. Um, although the model performance exceeded that of the pathologists, um, it failed to improve their accuracy as a group. A possible explanation uh, is that the pathologists didn't sufficiently trust their model's assessments this is in, uh, indirectly supported by the observation observation that the uh, the single pathologist who answered not to use a deep learning triage tool, uh, who is actually shown in, in the, uh, the blue triangle here, was also the only one who showed a decrease in, in performance with assistance. So in general, um, the success of AI models that assist in diagnosis depends on the clinician trust in the model. In our study, the pathologists were blinded to the model's performance metrics to avo avoid um, biasing their decision-making during the assisted phase of the experiment. Uh, however, the blinding to those data might have degraded their trust in the, in the model and the willingness to change their initial diagnosis. Um, so on the reader study with the OP2, uh, the sensitivity weighted threshold um, uh, or operating point um, shown on the, uh, the bottom table, um, our model achieved a, a, a significantly higher sensitivity and NPV over the pathologist and the, uh, the specificity didn't differ significantly. Um, even the, the model achieved a slightly higher specificity. Um, so to gain insight into models um, explainability, we performed a mixed effect model analysis using um, 10 histomorphological features uh, as fixed effects. And we used a uh, pathologist as a random effect and the, uh, the ground truth MSI status and model output 
was considered as a uh, dependent variable. The results show that uh, the, while all 10 features have well, well established uh, association with the MSI high tumors, only three of them were independently associated with ground truth MSI status. Um, these three includes the, the presence of uh, the uh, uh, more than one, uh, more than I'm sorry, more than two two more inf two more infiltrating uh, lymph sites per high power field, and absence of the dirty necrosis and the presence of the mucinous uh, differentiation. Um, when the model output was used as the dependent variable. Um, the, these uh, same three features were also significant, significantly associated with the model's output, uh, providing an insight into model's explainability uh, by using the, the human interpretable features to predict the, the model's output. Uh, we were able to assure that the, our model uh, relies on features that make biological sense. Um, so when the pathologist unassisted prediction as well as the model's output were included in the same mixed effects model as fixed effects, the model output was the only uh, significant predictor for, of the ground truth MSI status. And when the model output was incorporated into a mixed effect model with the three significant histopathological features, the model output remained the only significant predictor of the ground truth uh, MSI status. Um, so in conclusion, um, we presented a deep learning based system that can exceed human experts at detecting MSI high tumors um, in routine HNE stained whole set images and the model might offer uh, clinical value as an automated screening tool for, for selecting patients with colorectal cancer for confirmatory MSI testing. Uh, we consider our work uh, is still a small step towards the clinical application and future work will involve um, further optimization of the val and, and validation of the model on more like larger and more diverse data set um, the collecting huge data set is usually challenging in medical field and, and federated learning uh, may be a, a useful tool to overcome this challenge. Uh, learning more robust and generalizable representations is another important direction. And I personally have a strong interest in this. And um, also like multimodal integration can be another key. Um, uh, this is how physicians think and make decisions. And it's now an active area of medical AI research. Um, so this is all what I have today. Um, thank you for attending and listening. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.